Another really important part for layouts are scrollable widgets. And this is what we're going to work on. We have a widget and we can scroll through it. This is also quite flexible. So if I extend it, like so, at some point we can't scroll anymore because the window itself is larger than the list. Like with the responsive layouts, Decanter doesn't have an inbuilt tool for scrolling, which is kind of a pain. But what we can do is have a scroll wheel on a canvas. On top of that, we can also add widgets to a canvas. If we combine those two, we can create scrollable widgets. But this isn't the most straightforward process and, well, you have to be very specific in terms of what you are going to do. For example, in the widget that we are going to create, this one here, you always use the pack method. Now you can use any kind of layout, but you always have to create some custom solution. That is going to make much more sense when you actually implement everything. Once again, I have a basic setup for the code. And just as a reminder, I want to create a canvas and this canvas is going to hold a widget. For that, I want to create a canvas with tk.canvas. The parent is going to be the window. And let's say for the background color, I want to go with white. This canvas, I want to pack right away. I want to set expand to true and fill to both. Running this gets me a white background. On this, I now want to place a widget. This I can do with canvas and create window. This one at the minimum needs two arguments. We need a position and we need a window. A window is basically the name for the widget we want to place. I want to place the widget at a position 20 and 50, completely random numbers. For the window, tkinter does expect a widget, like ttk.label. For this one, again, we need a parent or a master. I usually set this to the canvas, but it actually doesn't matter. Now we need a text, and the text is going to be, let's say, a label. If I run this now, we have a label. The master here doesn't really matter. I can set this to window, and we would still get the same result. Now, this isn't a picture. It's an actual widget. I can, for example, place a button, and this button is here, and I can even press it. It works like any other widget which is super useful because that way I can add some scrolling mechanic and then I have a scrollable container. Although all of this does get a bit more complex, so I'm going to do all of this inside of a class. Let me get rid of the canvas and instead create a new class. I call this one a list frame. It is going to inherit from ttk.frame and we need a dunder init method. This one needs self, it needs a parent, then I want to have text data. Finally, I want to have an item height. Basically how this one is going to work. I'm going to create a new variable to store it in. List frame seems fine. This is going to be list frame. This one needs three arguments. The parent is going to be the window or could be anything, it's really up to you. Then we need some text data. For that, I have a list of some random entries. This one is literally just a list with a couple of tuples inside and those are random strings. This is going to be our text data. And finally, I need the item height. This is going to determine if I run the entire thing again, the item height is going to be the height of one of those entries. They are always going to span the entire width of the container. So this we don't have to set ourselves. You can also see here, we have for the first entry label and button. And this is this label and this button. For the height, I went with 100, but you can always choose whatever looks best. Inside of the init method, the first thing we always need is a super dunder init method. For this one, we need a master, which is going to be the parent. Right after that, I also want to pack this list frame, which I do with the pack method. This is going to be expand set as true and fill is going to be both. Since we are just working with a frame, any layout method is going to be fine here. I'm just working with the simplest one to not overcomplicate things. Once we have that, I want to get my widget data. This is going to tell me some basic things that I need to make all of this work. For that, first of all, I want to turn the text data into an attribute. So self.textData is going to be text, not text list, but text data. Next up, I want to know how many items I have. 
This I called self.item number. This item number we are getting from the text list, this one down here. I simply want to know the length of this list. I have one, two, and so on items, which means all I have to do is use the length function and then pass the text data in here. Finally, I want to have one more attribute, and that is going to be the list height. This is going to be the height of the entire list. This I get with self dot item number and multiply it with the item height. Next up, I can create the actual canvas that I want to use for scrolling. This is going to be self.canvas and then here pk.canvas. The parent is going to be self. And just so we can see something, I want to set the background to red. This self.canvas I want to pack right away. And I'm going to use the expand method. This should be true. And fill should be both. Let me run this straight away. And now we can see we have a canvas that covers the entire window. That's a pretty good start. On this canvas, we are now going to place another frame. I call this one the widget frame, although a better name would be the display frame. Essentially, what is going to happen? We are going to place all of our widgets inside of this frame. And then this frame, we're going to draw on this canvas. I think that's going to be quite difficult to understand. So let me explain while I'm implementing it. I want to have self.frame and this is going to be ttk.frame. The parent is going to be self. And now I want to use self.canvas.create underscore window. Once again, we need a position and we need a window. The window is quite simple. I want to use self.frame. The position actually is also very simple because I want to have zero and zero as a starting point. So the top left of the canvas. That being said, if I'm running all of this, we can't see a difference. However, what I can do now is give this self.frame a child. Let's work with TTK and label. The parent here is going to be self.frame and the text is going to be a label. I want to pack this right away without any arguments. Now if I run this, we can see label all the way in the top left. Not terribly visible right now, but you get the idea. At least it's working. One change we can already make is that we are placing the center of the widget right now. To make that a bit better, I want to place the anchor. And the anchor is going to be northwest. Now if I run this, we can see a label in the top left. That's much better. Although now things are getting a bit weird. We have this self.frame, but we are never using a layout method to place this frame. Instead, we are drawing it with the create window method. And that is creating some bits that are deviating from what you used to know about tkinter. The most important one is that this create canvas is now giving the space for the frame, which means I could set the width here to whatever number I want, it wouldn't matter. So the width of 200 is not going to make a difference. I could also set for the label fill to both we still couldn't see anything. The reason for that is, let me remove them actually, because they would be confusing. When we run create window, create window tries to find dimensions that are just large enough to display the widgets inside, which right now is just large enough to display this label. Although you could customize this. You can set a width, let me go with 200, and you can set a height. Let's go with 400 in here. So if I run this now, we can see a difference. If I expand the window a bit, the frame with this label is 200 pixels wide and it is 400 pixels tall. And this we can already use because I know, for example, the height is going to be the list height itself. Although I want to place all of this over multiple lines so it's a bit easier to see, like so. That is much better. Basically, what you have to understand now is when we are creating this frame, I want the frame to cover the entire canvas. But since we can't use pack, grid, or place, we have to do a bit of math here ourselves. Although the math is going to look as complex as this one, it's really not hard. The first part we already have because the height of the list is going to be self.list height. If I run this now, we can see we have a longer widget here that goes up to this point. For the width, 
I want to cover the entire width of the window. So right now, this would be 500. Let me change this to 500. And there we go. The label covers the entire window. Although if we resize the window, this breaks, but that we can work on. For now, I'm going to leave this at 500, but later on, we're going to make this flexible. What is much more important for now, we have to make this canvas scrollable as well. Right now, the canvas is as large as the container, so this TTK frame up here. But if you want to make this scrollable, it has to be larger. As a consequence, we have to give this a scroll region. This one wants four arguments. It wants the left, the top, the right, and the bottom. The left and the top are going to be zero and zero. Those are really easy. For the right side, I want to have the width of the list, which right now is going to be 500. And the bottom is going to be the height, self and list height. I should probably explain this in a bit of detail. We have a list frame, which is just going to be a frame. This is the parent of all of this. Inside of that, we have a canvas. And this canvas is going to, by default, cover the entire frame, like so. That being said, I want this canvas to be larger, which I'm doing with this line here. The width right now is hard-coded, so the width is always going to be 500. But the height, this part here, can, at least in theory, be larger than the window itself. It might be something like this. This entire canvas, I want to fill with a widget, which is this create window. This should fill the entire canvas, and then we are scrolling on it. Instead of creating a label, I want this to be a bit more flexible. I want to cycle over this text data here, which is going to be a for loop for item in text data. Let's make this self.textData. On top of that, if I run the entire app again, what we have is we have the index, then we have one bit of text, and then we have a button. The number here, we are getting from the for loop. For that, I have used the enumerate method, enumerate. With that, we are returning an index and the item. Let me actually print what we get. I want to print the index and I want to print the item. And I realized I made a fairly significant typo. This should be scroll region. Talking and typing is really not easy. There we go. We are getting the index and the content of the text data. This is the information we have gotten down here. This I now want to turn into a proper widget and then place it on this frame. Since that is going to become a tiny bit more complex, I want to store all of this inside of a method. I'm going to call it self.createItem. I want to paste in the index and the item. This I now want to create. I want to define create item. We need self, we need an index, and we need the item. I first of all want to create a new frame. This is simply TTK and frame. The parent here is going to be self.frame. Next up, I'm going to create a grid layout. This is simply going to be frame and row configure. We have only one row, so this is zero, and weight is going to be one. Then I can copy the entire thing and change this to column configure. I want there to be five columns. So zero, one, two, three, and four, all with the same weight. On top of that, I want to have the uniform argument and set this to A. Once I have that, I can actually create the widgets. This one is quite straightforward. I want to have ttk.label. The master is going to be the frame. Text is going to be the index. I want to have a label for the index. This is what we are creating right now. Then I want to have another label for, well, label. And then I want to have a button. And this button covers a whole bunch of columns. To display the text here, I simply am going to use an F string and pass the index in here. On top of that, I want to use the hashtag symbol. Next up, I want to place this widget using the grid layout method. The row is going to be zero and the column is also going to be zero. This I now want to duplicate. The text is not going to be the index. Instead, 
I want to have the item and the item has two parts because it is a tuple. We have label and button in this case. I only care about the one with the index zero, which would be label or thing, the first item. This I want to be in row zero and column one. Finally, I want to create one more widget and that is going to be TTK and button. The text here is going to be item and one and the column will be column two. On top of that, I want to have column span. This button is going to span three columns. Finally, the button is going to be sticky to north, south, east and west. With that, we have a frame and this frame I want to return. This is going to give me a widget. I can minimize this. If I run this now, we can't see anything. The reason for that is that this method returns a widget, but we're not placing it on this frame. But that is very easily done by using the pack method. This should be expand being true, fill being both. Then I want to have a bit of padding for y, this is going to be 4, and for pad x, this is going to be 10. Now if I run this, we are getting an error because I forgot an equal sign. There we go. Now we can see actual widgets. Although I cannot scroll right now, neither with the mouse wheel and I don't have a scroll bar. And if I resize this thing, you can see that we don't actually have scrolling. We just displayed a whole bunch of items. But it's at the very least a starting point. What I want to start with now is some actual scrolling. And for that, I'm going to use the mouse wheel. All I have to do for that is create another section here for the events. This is still inside of the init method. Let me minimize the create window part. To get mouse wheel scrolling, I want to get self.canvas and then find the mouse wheel. Although there's going to be one issue that we have to be aware of. Let me just run a lambda method with the event and print the event. If I run the app now and I have my mouse over the widgets and use the scroll wheel, nothing is going to happen. However, if I extend the app and use the scroll wheel over the red bits, we can see scroll wheel. The problem that we have right now is that this canvas.bind is only working for the canvas. But once we're adding widget to the canvas with create window, tkinter sees this as the mouse being active on this widget, not on the canvas itself, which is why the event doesn't work. This, however, you can fix quite easily with bind all. This adds the event to all of the children of the widget as well. So now if I run this with my mouse on all of these widgets, I can use the scroll wheel wherever I am, which means now I can create the actual Lambda function. What we need in here is self.canvas.yView underscore scroll. This one needs an amount and a unit. Once again, for the unit, Tkinta just wants to have a string that says units. For the amount, you basically want to choose what works best with your computer. What I have used is negative integer and then event.delta divided by 60. Now if I run this, I can use the scroll wheel and go up and down. This is working really well. Although, once again, if I make this thing larger, well, I guess it still works, but if I make it full screen, we get some very strange behavior. Although we are making progress. For the next part, I want to make sure that the list covers the entire width of the canvas. Right now, all of this is hard coded. When I'm creating the window, it is 500. And when I'm creating the scroll region, this is also 500. But we do know how to get the width of a widget. We need, in this case, self and w info underscore either width or height. In this case, width. Also, don't forget to call it. If I now run this again, we can see the same result because by default, the window is 500 pixels. But this would still work even if we have different numbers. This I also want to paste in for the width or the list or rather create window. If I run this again now, although now if I run this, well, we can't see anything. The reason for that is that this w.width is one by default. Let me actually print it. If I print this, you can see what I'm talking about. 
I want to print self.winfo with, don't forget to call it once again, and if I run this, we are getting one. As a consequence, the widget we are creating is all the way on the left here, and it is one pixel wide, so not very helpful. To account for that, I want to bind the configure part again. So self.bind, and in here, I want to have configure. This is going to run every time we are updating the size or the position of this container, this list frame here. It is also going to run when we are creating the widget for the first time, meaning we can use this to update the size of all of this and make this work again. Since we are going to use a couple of lines of code here, I want to create a separate method. I call this one self.update underscore size. Let's create this right away. I want to have update size. Remember here, we need self and event. For the parameters, we need self and event. In here, I want to get self.canvas again and run create window one more time. With essentially the same arguments, all of these here, I want to pass into this one. And now if we run this, this is going to work again. Because essentially what is happening now, when we are creating this bit here, it changes the width to one, so we can't see it. But this configure is going to call this update method once when we are creating the layout, which is going to draw on top of this create window. And that way we can only see the updated canvas. And this one has the proper size. I'm not actually quite sure why winfo.width works in here, but not in here. Tkinter can be a bit weird with that. If you play around with this, you will eventually understand this, but it's more of an art than a science, to be honest. What we can do is simply get rid of this thing here. This is still going to work. Now we also have scrolling. And more importantly, if I resize the window, we are covering the entire width. Because every time that we are resizing the window, we are calling this method here with configure. And configure is going to update the width of this create window. The width is always going to be the full height of the container. That way, the frame we are going to place, this one here, is going to cover the entire width of the canvas. Also, I want to get rid of the comments here because we have a ton of logic. I want to keep this a bit more organized. Although we are almost done, we have the basic widgets and they work very well. The one problem we have right now is if I make the container really large, I can keep on scrolling and now this starts to look weird. The basic problem we have, if I make this smaller again, if the actual container is larger than the list, this kind of logic starts to break. So we have to account for that. That isn't terribly difficult and all of the logic happens inside of update size. Let me minimize the init method so all of this is a bit easier to see. The issue here is the height. We have a list frame and this would be Something like this. It's just a frame, nothing else. Inside of there, we have a canvas, and inside of the canvas, we have a frame. This frame could either be, let's say, this tall, or it could be this tall. If the list is longer than the container, this one is perfectly fine. We have a normal scroll logic, and everything just works. The problem is when we have a list that is shorter than the container. So the height here is what's causing the problem. What we have to do to fix that is if this list is smaller or well shorter than the entire container, I want to stretch the list to cover the entire height. Also, I want to disable scrolling because it shouldn't be possible if the list doesn't even cover the entire container. All we have to do for that is set a custom height. Right now, we always set the height from the init method, this height here. However, if the list doesn't cover the entire height of the container, I want to have the height of the container as the height of this window. Which means if self.list height is greater or equal than self.winfo not width but height. If that is the case, I want height to be self.list height. This is basically what we already have, but this height I want to have in here. Although for now, this isn't going to make a difference. So the same problem is going to come up again. And here we're getting an error because if this condition is false, 
we are not accounting for it. But that we're going to work on right away. If the container, so winfo.height, is taller than the list. If that is the case, I want the list to stretch out over the entire height of the container, which in practice means the height should be self.winfo and height. With that, I can run the entire thing again. And now if I maximize it, the list now covers the entire container. Although if I scroll up, we still get some weird scrolling behavior. All we have to do for this one, I want to get self.canvas and then unbind all the events for this one is going to be the mouse wheel. This is going to be the opposite of bind all, quite obvious, I think. So for the canvas earlier, we used canvas and bind all for the mouse wheel. If the container is taller than the list, I want to unbind this. So now if I run this, this is looking still pretty good. I can maximize this. And now if I scroll, well, I can't scroll anymore. That way we are simply covering the entire frame with a list and this looks quite responsive. The problem now is if I make this small again, I still cannot scroll because I removed the binding. But that we can fix quite easily. All I have to do is copy this entire line. And if the list is taller than the window height, I want to bind this event again, like so. If you're doing this multiple times, tkinter simply ignores the binding calls. So we can do this multiple times without a problem. With that, we are pretty much done. Now I can scroll, I can maximize the window, and I can't scroll anymore. If I minimize this again, I can scroll again. This is working really well. With that, let me minimize everything so things are a bit easier to see. We are pretty much done, although I do want to do an exercise. This is really important. What I want you guys to do is to add a scroll bar to all of this. First of all, we have to create the widget for the scroll bar itself. This is going to happen inside of init. In here, let's say before events, I want to create a scroll bar. This should be an attribute, so self. Let's call it scroll bar. This we create with TTK and scroll bar. The parent is going to be self. Orient should be vertical. Next up, I want to place the scroll bar. This I do with self dot scroll bar dot place. The positions here are going to be rel x one rel y zero, meaning we are on the top right, and I want rel height to be one. With that, we are covering the entire vertical space. Finally, we have to set the anchor to northeast. With that, we should be having a scroll bar. Let's run the code. And there we go. On the right side, we have a scroll bar. Although it doesn't do anything. And on top of that, it's overlapping with the buttons. So this isn't ideal. For this project, I'm not going to worry too much about it. But in an actual project, you want to have a better system here. For example, the entire container could be its own frame, and then you place a scroll bar to the right of it using the pack method. That way, it wouldn't be overlapping. With that, we have a scroll bar. Now we have to connect it to the widget itself, or more specifically, to the canvas, this canvas here. This requires us to add two more basic bits. First of all, when we are creating the scroll bar, it needs to have a command whenever we are clicking on it. And this command is going to execute self.canvas.yView. That way, the scroll bar is going to influence the canvas. Let's try. Now I can click on the scroll bar and move the canvas. This is working really well. Although we can't see it in the scroll bar itself. For that, we're going to need another line of code. What we have to do is to set self.canvas dot configure. In here, we need the command y scroll command. This is going to influence the scroll bar depending on where we are on the canvas. For that, we need self dot scroll bar dot set. And with that, I can run the entire thing. And now you can see the scroll bar only covers the appropriate amount. And this is working pretty well. Although you are going to notice here, the canvas has one slightly annoying thing. If I move the scroll bar really fast, you are going to see this. 
you can see we get some graphical glitches. And that is because sometimes the canvas doesn't keep up with the drawing, which unfortunately is not something we can really deal with. It's just a problem of tkinter. Although if you just use the mouse wheel, this isn't happening. With that, we have a scroll bar, but there's one more thing that I do want to do. That is, if we maximize the window and we can't scroll anymore, the scroll bar should disappear because it's not needed. For that, we don't need init anymore. Instead, I want to work inside of update size. In here, the if statement is what really matters. This if statement triggers if we can scroll, and this if statement triggers if we cannot scroll. If we cannot scroll, I want to hide the scroll bar, which we do with self.scrollbar.place underscore forget. With that, if I run the entire thing again, and I expand the window, at some point the scroll bar will disappear. This is looking good. Although, if I make the window smaller again, the scroll bar doesn't reappear, which is what we have to work on next. And this happens inside of this if statement here. All we have to do is place the scroll bar again. This is what we have done inside of the init method, this line here. I can just copy it, paste it in here, and now we should be good to go. Let me run the entire thing. There we can see the scroll bar again. This is working pretty good. Now, if I make the window larger, Let's full screen it actually. Now the scroll bar disappears and we can't scroll at all. However, if I make the window smaller again, the scroll bar reappears. I can make the window even smaller and this is still working really good. I suppose there's one thing I should mention. If you place or use any layout method on a widget multiple times, tkinter is going to overwrite the previous layout method. Meaning if we call place twice, the last call is going to overwrite the previous one. 